In this turbulent time, where the risk of global recession remains high, India's economic journey and future potential continue to be rays of hope. The Morgan Stanley Report, Why This is India's Decade, has estimated that India has the necessary conditions in place for an economic boom fueled by offshoring, investment in manufacturing, the energy transition, and the country's advanced digital infrastructure. Join us as we explore how the new India is on track to becoming the world's third largest economy. India's Tata Advanced Systems Limited, in collaboration with Airbus, will manufacture C-295 military transport planes under the Make in India initiative. The foundation stone for the Tata Airbus plant was laid by Prime Minister Narendra Modi in Vadodara, Gujarat. This is considered by many to be India's big leap into becoming a global hub for manufacturing large aircrafts, both passenger and cargo. The Tata Airbus plant will generate 15,000 new skilled jobs and will also provide business to over 100 micro, small and medium enterprises. India's mantra of Make in India, made for the globe, continues to enhance the country's capabilities in many different industries and areas. Now, Bharat, transport प्लेन का भी बहुत बड़ा निर्माता बनेगा आज भारत में इसकी शुरुआत हो रही है और मैं वो दिन देख रहा हूं जब दुनिया के बड़े पैसेंजर प्लेन्स भी भारत में ही बनेंगे और उन पर लिखा होगा Make in India. The world is looking towards India's robust market, which is fast recovering from the COVID-19 pandemic. Be it relaxing foreign direct investment norms across several sectors, or launching the production-linked incentive scheme aiming to make Indian manufacturers globally competitive, the Indian government has been the driving force behind India's economic recovery. Recently, India's economy overtook the United Kingdom's in terms of nominal GDP, making it the fifth largest in the world. The Morgan Stanley Why This is India's Decade Report further predicts that India will become the world's third largest economy and stock market before the end of the decade. Yes, it is possible and uh, it's important to can fully unlock this this entrepreneurial potential in the economy and uh, and link firms to, to to markets to 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 new ways of doing business and and to technologies and uh, and 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 it's you know that's that's the way to get there how will india reshape its future growth as per the morgan stanley report India's per capita annual income is set to rise from 2,278 USD to 5,242 USD in 2031, setting the stage for a discretionary spending boom. The report also estimates that global spending on outsourcing could rise from 180 billion USD per year to around 500 billion USD by 2030, which will have significant effects on both commercial and residential real estate demand. The report praised India's Adar system, the foundational ID for all Indians, designed to facilitate high volume financial transactions at low cost with small value transactions. Further, the report estimates that India's manufacturing share of its GDP will rise from 21.6% to 41% by 2031 implying an incremental 1 trillion USD manufacturing opportunity. 
India's global export market share is also expected to almost double from 2.3% to 4.5% by 2031, providing an incremental 1.2 trillion USD export opportunity. India's services exports will almost triple to 527 billion USD from 178 billion USD in 2021 over the next decade. From e-commerce to internet penetration, passenger vehicle sales to residential property, the new India will shape the new world order in the next coming decade. Insha Mir, a journalism graduate, made a name for herself as an entrepreneur when she created Kashmir's first organic fiber apparel company. EcoCash, her brand, boasts being organic, authentic, and sustainable. Today, Insha is a role model for tens of thousands of Kashmiri men and women. Women have long played secondary roles in society compared to men. Women like Insha, however, are blazing a trail forward for young female entrepreneurs in the country. Insha is but one example of the growth story of Indian women who are playing an instrumental role in further bolstering Brand India. Hundreds of miles away in Surat City, in the country's western state of Gujarat, a large number of women entered into the textile and apparel industries. Women in Gujarat wear many hats from company leaders, to designers, to store proprietors. Textile is a very wider sector. In each and every field, women has really made a remarkable uh, work done, whether it's a uh, teaching, architect. So why not in textiles? We can go a very good way to develop a lot 2019 I have a woman empowerment ka pura ladies ko leke pura project ready kiya hai to usme 72 ladies ko leke mera pura concept hai ki wo project pe main work kar saku abhi mere sath 23 to 25 ladies aur work kar rahi hai jisko main bada ke bahut sara bada project karne ka plan kar rahi hu aur sab jagah pe mera indian Gujarati culture. Aap meri har designs mein Gujarati culture ka reflection dekhi paoge. It is not just the textile industry or any other one industry that has shown positive trends of women's increasing labor force participation. Women's diversified role and contributions have expanded dramatically across all sectors. From high-end corporate offices in Mumbai, to a mall in Gurgaon, to the farmlands of Punjab and Haryana, women have not only entered the workforce, but they are taking on leadership roles as well. India, once dubbed a conservative society, is seeing women emerging as leaders in finance, technology, manufacturing, health, and many other sectors. As per the Periodic Labor Force Survey Annual Report for July 2020 to June 2021, the female labor participation in ordinary status grew 2.3% to 25.1% in 2021, up from 22.8% the previous years. These numbers are projected to rise in times to come, with many experts opining that women will drive society. If you really look at the workforce function also, agriculture, large chunk of the agriculture production, maintenance and running is actually taken care of by women and you know roughly about 65% of the population in India is agriculture. Even the unorganized sector to a great extent has an influence of women. If you look at numbers, roughly about 669 million women are there in this country today, uh, out of which roughly about 450 million women are in the workforce, the different kinds of workforces. 
The government is committed to advancing women's position in society in a holistic manner, be it ensuring early childhood education or creating a welcoming workplace environment. The improvements and growth we see today are the outcome of India's long-term multifaceted efforts, both as a society and government. Over the past few years, the government has introduced a number of programs aimed at empowering women, from offering socio-economic security to fostering entrepreneurship. One of the first priorities of the Modi government was to put in place policies to empower women in their homes so that a foundation was set for a demographic change in the percentage of women that entered the workforce. The Swachh Bharat Mission, the Ujwala Yojana, and the Beti Bachao Beti Parao Yojana were three programs created to make sure a basic bar was set up across India that gave women the resources needed to confidently stride into the labor force. What were these three missions? The Swachh Bharat Mission ensured toilets for all and an end to open defecation, giving women protection and self-respect in their own homes. The Ujwala Yojana, a national mission to lay pipe cooking gas in homes across the country. This may seem to be a basic facility, however, its knock-on benefits were plenty. Mothers and sisters who traditionally tended to the kitchen of a home no longer had to breathe in noxious fumes by burning coal or wood, and now had clean pipe gas for their cooking needs, keeping their health in order. The third scheme, the Beti Bachao Beti Parao scheme, a project close to the heart of Prime Minister Narendra Modi, ensured education for every girl child in the country. With these schemes in place, women in rural India are turning out to be a crucial national asset that will lead the Indian growth story. The nation has never been afraid to prioritize competent women. Having had a female Prime Minister, female President, to women leading the way in India's space mission, to women doctors getting the nation's health back on track. Indian women are a critical part of the India story, and their story has just begun. <laughs>